what you reap, reap what you sow, what you plant in the kingdom will surely grow. As an openly gay man, it causes a significant amount of personal pain for me. When the church that I love says homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching, is just fundamentally unfair and untrue. And the fruit of the Spirit will come back to you. We wonder why these folks keep banging on the doors, keep pushing us and pushing us, trying to back us into a corner. I think every time we go, we, we hope that this will be the year. You want to believe that people will do the right thing. You know, you want to believe that, of course, the church will step up. San Francisco pastor Karen Olivito, divinity professor Randall Miller, and Bakersfield pastor Richard Thompson are heading toward a showdown. They'll join United Methodists from around the world for a convention in Tampa, Florida, where the church will decide whether it still holds that homosexuality is a sin. It's Easter Sunday at Glide Memorial Methodist Church in San Francisco, and Pastor Karen Olivito takes the stage in front of a full house. For almost 50 years, this church has been a place of unconditional love and unconditional acceptance. Olivito counts an unusual mix of churchgoers amongst her charges. Gay, lesbian, large trans population people of different colors and ethnicities, people of different faith backgrounds. It is powerful to be here on a Sunday morning and see that diversity lived out so boldly. At the convention in Tampa, she will join a national network of progressive Methodists to lobby for a change in the church's doctrine on homosexuality. But the progressives will face opposition from a coalition of conservative evangelical Methodists. At First United Methodist Church in Bakersfield, California, Pastor Richard Thompson leads the Sunday morning service. Homosexual people are to be loved. They're our brothers and sisters. But the practice of homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching and has been um, for 2,000 years. Thompson is a member of the evangelical group Good News, which leads the campaign to retain the church's doctrine toward gays and lesbians. If a church loses its doctrine, it can no longer bring salvation, because without the doctrine, you don't have a foundation to stand on. And if you want to say all things are okay, then it doesn't matter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. While conservative Methodists like Richard Thompson argue that the church's stance on homosexuality is necessary for its survival, that belief is being challenged, not just in progressive churches, but even in some divinity schools. The story of Sodom is often used um, as a key text. Or has Randall Miller teaches at the Pacific School of Religion. Homosexuality and the condemnation of homosexuality. And the reason why um, it's not a story about um, homosexuality as we understand it, is that the folks in the story are heterosexual men. I teach the introduction to Christian ethics class, and one of the fundamental issues that we talk about is human sexuality. How is it that the Jesus movement became transformed into the church as sex beliefs? Most of them know that the issue of gay and lesbian inclusion is a ongoing issue in most churches and most denominations and it is one of the sharpest conflicts that they probably will ever be engaged in. Most of us at some He level, believes the church can embrace homosexuality without losing its way. In the Christian tradition, there is only one God. So obviously, God did create Adam and Eve and Adam and Steve. This theological dispute dividing United Methodists will come to a head in Tampa when both sides clash at the convention.
We invite in English. Invite in Spanish. The Tampa Convention Center is teeming with United Methodists. Invite in sign language. Nearly a thousand elected delegates are here, representing Methodist congregations from across the country and around the world. Everyone, come one, come all. Over the next 10 days, they will debate and vote on church policy toward homosexuals. It's like a legislative assembly of delegates like myself. We each have one vote and we try and sort of build the necessary number of votes to get a policy passed. Thank you. If this looks like a political convention, then that's no accident. The Republicans would later hold their national convention right next door. Among the observers watching the delegates from the bleachers is Bakersfield pastor Richard Thompson. He's joined by Tom Lamprecht, who heads up the conservative lobbying effort. There are so many different groups and perspectives within the United Methodist Church that it's very difficult for us to have a common identity. And so um, there's kind of a wrestling going on between the various groups who believe that their particular view is the way we should be. Across the street, Pastor Karen Olivito joins progressive Methodists from around the country. They're here to change the church's stance on homosexuality. We have sp spent time really breaking down every delegate. Are they clergy, lay, male, female, LGBT or straight? I'll be working with a group of volunteers to help strategize. Both sides are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to influence elected delegates. But the wild card in this vote are the new delegates from Africa where the United Methodist Church is gaining most of its new converts. Of the nearly 1,000 convention delegates, roughly one-third are from Africa. They'll play a critical role in making any changes to church doctrine. But before the petition on homosexuality makes it to the convention floor, it must first pass two committees. This is the story of what happens on the convention floor and behind closed doors. Petition. What divinity professor Randall Miller and his allies hope to do is to revoke the passage in church doctrine, declaring that the practice of homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching. And it would amend the process is like passing a bill in Congress. The first step is a vote in the subcommittee. I chose to be assigned to Church and Society B, which is the one that handles human sexuality issues. So let's begin the conversation. In the I'll spirit. be working with a group of delegates who want to repeal that uh, passage, and then there'll be people who are solid opponents. I don't see my ideas or views on homosexuality changing. They'll be working hard to defeat any legislation that would repeal the church's opposition to homosexuality. Every Sunday I go to communion church and ask the Lord to forgive me where I have sinned. The evangelicals in the room argue that the church's position on homosexuality is true to the Bible and that God loves the sinner but hates the sin. That if we want the pathway to heaven, we must repent of the things that we do that the, the Bible tells us that is, not, that is wrong. Repent? I'm not going to repent. The progressives in the room respond with personal stories from gay and lesbian delegates. It makes me very sad when I hear some of you, though, say, no, I love you, I love you, I love you, but what you and Linda have is wrong. And when I hear that, I hear you saying, that what you do in the bedroom is wrong. I hear you saying that it also must be wrong then that we own a home and cut the grass and buy the groceries and bring them home. That everything that goes into making up what she and I have mm. is wrong for some of you. It's fine with me if you want to hold my relationship to high standards. I think we should hold all relationships to high standards. I just don't want you to tell me that I can't have one. Harry, I do love you, and you're responsible for me changing where I am, where I was, to where I am today. And I'm basically a conservative theological person. 
we have got to change this discipline, take out this harmful, harmful language. After a lengthy debate, the delegates vote by paper ballot. For the petition to advance to the next stage, a majority of delegates will need to vote for it. I do have the result of the ballot. The petition has passed. 14 votes in favor of removing the language, 12 votes opposed, and one abstention. Let us pray. Dear God, it's the first God. time that a petition to repeal church doctrine on homosexuality has passed this committee. It's an early indication that the progressive coalition could actually succeed. Amen. The progressive camp celebrates. Down the street at the Evangelical Coalition's headquarters, Tom Lamprecht receives news of the vote. So subcommittee, very close vote, 14 to 12. We believe that, that what we're talking about in homosexuality is a behavior. We all have attractions and desires to do certain things that are contrary to the will of God. To give in to those desires doesn't mean that we are created that way. It just means that we have desires that are contrary to the will of God. We are then called as Christians to understand and to resist those desires. Great. Thank you very much. Committee 7. Yeah. The issue now goes before a full committee of 87 delegates. If adopted, it will then make its way to the convention floor. We decided to take a very principled but high-stakes approach to just delete the foundational statement about the incompatibility of homosexuality and Christian teachings from our book of discipline. Is there discussion? I'd rise to speak in favor of this petition. Each day I meet with young people. They've come to their parents and they've said, I think I might be gay. Hear me, I think I might be, not that I am, I might be. And what has happened is their parents have turned them out of their home. when they were 16, 15, 14, and now they're living on the street. And then what happens is after several years, they end up in my office because now they are testing positive for HIV. This language that's in here is doing harm because when I talk with the parents and I ask them why, why did you turn them out? They say, because my faith tells me I can't allow this under my roof. I ask you to vote for this. But then the African delegates begin to weigh in. The word homosexuality is incompatible to the scriptures. Et c'est pour cela que l'Église ne doit pas encourager, parce que si l'Église encourage, c'est la mort de l'Église elle-même. That's why if the church encourages this, this will be the death of the church itself. Une femme avec une femme ne fait pas d'enfant. They refer to scripture. On parle de famille de Abraham, de Isaac et autres. The Bible talks about the family of Abraham, Isaac, always family. Et famille, c'est un homme et une femme. And when we talk about family, we see a man and a woman. Jamais une femme et une femme. Never woman and woman. Jamais un homme et un homme. Never a man and man. That's Merci. not family. And they warn of the impact on their congregations if there is a change in church doctrine. And when we came here, uh, members of our churches told us that when you go to the general conference, if the vote on homosexuality passes, then we are going to leave the church. Many of the folks from the countries of Africa are uh, more culturally conservative around issues of human se sexuality, including you know, the acceptance of gay and lesbian people. And so there's a bit of an uphill climb for us. After more than an hour of discussion, it's time to decide on whether the petition goes to the floor. Please write yes on your ballot if you support this petition. Please write no if you oppose this petition. Are there any ballots that have not been collected? All right, I declare this ballot then closed. I do have a report on the petition. 
It was not supported with 33 votes in support and 43 votes against and one abstention. We stand in recess until 1.30. This time, the conservative African vote was the deciding factor. I am open and I am willing. For the progressives, it means their quest to delete the church's stance against homosexuality has failed. It's a painful setback. Immediately, leaders of the Progressive Coalition meet to assess their situation. It's been disastrous. I mean, we just, it's, it's just been bam, 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 bam. With time running out, they switch to Plan B. They decide to support a compromise petition that states the church agrees to disagree on homosexuality. But the conservative evangelical lobbyists are in no mood to compromise. Right this way, gentlemen. You came to the right place for breakfast. Very good. good to see you again. They host a breakfast at their headquarters to urge the delegates to remain strong in defending the church's doctrine. Well, this morning we'd like to spend just a little bit of time uh, speaking about the issue of homosexuality. And here to help us with that is uh, Reverend Karen Booth, who is the Executive Director of Transforming Congregations. I found myself listening intently to the openly gay and lesbian delegates and responding with strong emotion to their stories of personal hurt and frustration with what they believe are the hurtful policies of our church. My guess is that there may even be some of you out here at breakfast this morning who are wrestling with similar feelings. And some of you also might be considering support of legislative proposals that appear to achieve common ground. But friends, I want you to know that when all positions regarding sexual ethics are equally valid, the historic Christian teaching that affirms God's good gift of sexual intimacy only within the context of monogamous heterosexual marriage is undermined and effectively set aside. A church that systematically refuses to choose between truth and error has no place left to stand. May God prevent the United Methodist Church for, from ever becoming such a denomination. Amen. The floor of the convention center fills up with nearly a thousand delegates representing United Methodist congregations from around the world. Together, they'll vote on the compromise. Good morning, Bishop, General Conference, visitors, and volunteers. It's time to turn in our discussion to an issue that I know matters for many here and in our church and in our world. James Howell at Microphone 6 will introduce it. Microphone 6. Many people feel that we need to take a strong stand against homosexuality, and many people feel we need to be totally inclusive. But what we want doesn't matter. What matters is God's will. And let me suggest that perhaps it is God's will that we tell the truth that we disagree. We have said for a long time that we do not condone homosexuality, but they are here. They are in our delegations. They are serving in our churches. They keep coming back to a church that keeps saying no to them. There's a kind of miracle in that. There's a kind of grace in that. Now in a few minutes, we're going to take a vote. And voting is about power. And let's acknowledge what we all know is that there are a lot of power plays going on at this conference. There's backroom maneuvering and manipulation. Let's be very clear that Jesus never did anything because of some backroom manipulation. Let us vote for what is God's will. That is that we disagree. 
Thank you. All right, friends, we've had a long and good debate. Let us uh, prepare to vote. If you'll take your keypads. If you would support the motion, please, please press 1. If you're not in support of the motion, please press 2. Please vote now. Five seconds. Just breathe for a moment. And the voting is closed. And you have not supported the motion. Thank you. Four years ago, the vote was close, but this time it wasn't. The progressives lost in a landslide with the African delegates making the difference. Conservatives, like Richard Thompson, breathed a sigh of relief. I'm glad that the church retained its current language, which I think is fair and compassionate and understanding. And, um, and it's a good position for the church to be in. Um, we do face a changing cultural climate in America concerning this. But of course, uh, the church has never allowed the cultural climate or a segment of the culture to determine what our basic beliefs are. But the progressives are frustrated and angry. Friends, we're going to be moving toward a break. Let's be in order, please. Even if we have to remind the church. Having lost the vote, progressive delegates and their allies protest and shut down the session. I know that there are lots of folks out there who just say, why are we wasting any time with religious institutions who don't want us? My response is that 60% of gay and lesbian people claim some re religious affiliation and are mostly Christian despite everything that's happened. Before leaving their Tampa convention, progressives gathered once more. They vowed to continue fighting for gay rights within and outside the church. Retired Bishop Melvin Talbert urged them on. I declare to you that the derogatory language and restrictive laws in the Book of Discipline are immoral and unjust and no longer deserve our loyalty and obedience. Talk of schism is spreading within the denomination. Six weeks after leaving Tampa, church leaders in New York and Northern California passed resolutions to consider abandoning United Methodism. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above. At the same time, society at large continues to be divided over gay rights. Just four days after the Tampa Convention, voters in North Carolina passed a ban on same-sex unions. The next day, President Obama announced his support for gay marriage. The church will hold its next convention in 2016. God. 